Hello and welcome to Warblog. This is just uh, going to be a short video um, just to give you a heads up on this. Now, it's a Lepo 2016 and it's not finished, not by a long shot. But I've just been up all night sort of putting things together and I thought, wow. This is surreal. Um, I thought that how was the term called? Done the best. Um, Why don't I maybe a quick look at the original Aleppo? Uh, which we can find in the search bar. Oh, those countries. Right, so if we go to the third page, it might be a better way to do the search of whatever. Okay, I thought that this was complicated. It's the thing, this is a lepo. Now, to some extent, I sort of think, well, maybe that with a better scale to do it but, but I thought that that was complicated this is an incredible setup and <laughs> lots of different forces in comparison to what we've got now that is not complex this is an incredible setup no it's not now Aleppo is a lot smaller so the scale is a lot further out now it's interesting really because I'm sort of thinking there's no way you could play this game. Now, I, I, I just want to say it's not finished, um, so it's not going to get any simpler when I finished, but it won't look so, you know, the, the edges. There, there will be more troops sort of in these places and out here, so it looks a little more natural. This is me just. Placing the basic troops here where they should be and forming the delineations of where units are. So let me maybe just um, actually tell you who's who. Essentially, you've got two, two forces. You've got the Syrian army, who the clue are the brown units, and then you've got the rebels who are all sorts of colored units. Now, the people on the Syrian side are not just um, the brown units. So what we've got here is the National, um, the National Defense Force. We've got some Hezbollah units here. Uh, these ones here are Iranian, so that's Bazi, and that is the Army of the Guardians of the Islamic Revolution. Um, and there's a few more Ones. I haven't put all the regimes in. Now, I don't know what was really meant to go here, so I've got the Lika Al Quds battalions and a couple of these counters. So, what you've actually got, you've got the rebels who are not ISIS, it's just everyone else apart from ISIS, forming a line across here. So, if you follow this mouse and then it goes up there, that unit's out of zone. Completely surrounded by rebels. Down here, out here, around there, down there, and down there. So that is the front line of the western part of Aleppo. Um, and everything else here is rebel. So if you were to sort of ignore that, that, that would be the front line. But there's this island unit here. So these are also rebels. So this is a Ba'ath unit, so that's Syrian. Um, you can see the word Ba'ath there closely. Um, these are rebels. So this is like an island pocket of rebels that goes all the way up to there. Now the thing is, they don't go up there, they are actually surrounded. So I, I, I did this map before, I sort of figured this. 
there, there would be a Syrian unit just there. So they aren't, they can't get out of there. And these, the Syrian flag can, in theory, go straight across there. You know, there's no gap. So there is the island. So if we follow it around, these troops are all essentially besieged uh, by the Syrian government. Um, so that's pretty much that. When you actually know what you're looking at, it's not that difficult. It's easier when you've got the original map. Um, slide over. Yep, so when you're looking at the map, obviously you've got that line, which I'll just show you, whereas the rebels are all across here. And then you've got this little island, and my map sort of tops off here, so it looks as though it sort of cuts off, but it doesn't. Now, if you actually look at this carefully, it's got lots of little things that, you know, these are a particular type of unit. They actually make sense, but two things. Firstly, I don't have the time to go around and actually figure out who these are and then place them there accordingly. And secondly, I'm not convinced that these maps are ever that accurate. I think someone just goes around and forms the units in. Now, what I had difficulty with is with these units, because I cannot for life of me figure out who they are. So I have, to some extent, just chosen these units, the uh, Ligua Al Quds, and, and put those there. But I haven't put them in any force, but you don't know. So anyway, I've got to come back and do more. The more I've got to do is essentially. Not so much on the rebel side, I think they're pretty much done, although they will be having a huge amount of air defence, just for the hell of it, and a significant amount of possibly shorter range artillery. So that would be those dragon things that they make, improvised cannons, whatever. Um, so there's still some work on the rebel side, but there's still a hell of a lot of work on the Syrian side, because all I've done really is just put all these units around. I mean, they wouldn't actually survive. So you just have to put some armor there, some armor, armor, armor. But basically, I'm going to then, essentially, when I've figured out the balance of, you know, Barker units and national defense force and you know, all the other units that are actually involved, I'll then start adding the units to sort of give basically the Syrian armies can have the advantage, especially when it comes to things like mechanized units. There's no mechanized units on here. Um, so you know, these are only just placeholders that you never know where the map is. So there'll be lots of mechanized units, armor, lots of artillery. They've already got um, the air power. There it is. But this is such a surreal list. Um, I mean, all I did, I mean, to be quite honest, it's probably all wrong and it's probably. Um, all in the wrong, whatever there is, is all in the wrong place. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, this is sort of a huge amount of artistic license here. And the reason I'm doing this video is just because I'm not sure that this is actually a good job. Um, I think it's interesting and um, I enjoy doing it, I enjoy looking at it, but I just don't think, well, with regards to strategy, it just is so hard. I and mean, how do you do it? I mean, I can. Because I've set it up, I know where the lines are and your objectives. I think anyone playing this would just sit there and go, oh, right, okay, and then maybe go on to one of the simpler ones. And I do enjoy the simple games. I keep saying it again and again. I don't think I could enjoy playing this. I wouldn't say enjoy playing it. I would say I wouldn't have the time to play it properly because you'd have to just really start thinking. But the thing is, as, as well, I'm not sure that it would play as an accurate simulation because there's more to what's actually happening in Aleppo than the military aspect that this game portrays. You know, all you have to do is get a, a DR result and then they, they shift. Well, that's not what's happening in Aleppo. It's a lot bloodier than that. Um, you know, obviously, it's very slow. The one I did before was over a year ago. You know, the situation is, it hasn't changed that much. I think they're saying they've got a final push and going to go for it. I mean, the only reason they've got a final push is because it's going on for a year and there's no sanitation and, you know, the 
there's not a lot of resistance there. Um, that's what I think. I imagine it will be over some sort of later, but I think what it does represent is the complexity of what's happening in the Aleppo, the complexity of the structure of the, um, the rebel forces, and how the hell they coordinate all that. Now, they are actually all part of the, a lot of them are all part of the umbrella group. Uh, basically, you've got the Fatah Halal, uh, which most of these units are from. Now, a lot of them are not actually maybe in Aleppo. Um, they're basically sort of stuck. Then you've got the Army of Conquest, um, which is an umbrella brigade with people like Al Nasra or Jabhat, Fatah Al Sham, and Arak Al Sham. And then you've got um, Ansar Al As, Ansar Al Islam. Um, and that's pretty much it, but it's a huge um, umbrella group. Um, and so what I'm sort of, sort of get, getting to is what, what, you, what you get as a reflection is not so much complexity in, in, in the form of a simulation, but you, you've got lots of units and uh, figuring out how they coordinate is, I think, you know, not an eye opener. But in this, in this particular game, I think what I'm trying to get to here I've given this map over. This is the one I started with. Um, what you've got are where all the units are. So obviously here, maybe that's what that should be in the YPG, which is Kurds. Um, but so what we've got, it's incredibly, it's almost as complex looking. But then what you've got is what well, you've got from the citadel. You've got Syrian troops pushing south through Al Jalu, which is held by Jihadists, so it's, it's, it's that orange colour, and Bab al Naima. So going back to, to, to the actual game, that would be about there. So you've got troops coming from there, pushing this way and that way. So both into those two hexes. Now they're, they're actually stuck full of troops, so they're not going to be able to just one unit. That's why I say, I mean, this, the Syrian really have not been completed yet, just based on the board, massive amounts, maybe even more. Um, but the point is, it's it's a very different sort of strategy game to a lot where you, you sort of contemplate the overall strategy and you know, maybe you need to send the line ahead and then you send some flanking units and you get lots of movement and dynamics. I think what 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 I'm sort of what I'm thinking is this realistic in the sense that um, you pick one battle and then do it? So, for example, what I'm saying here, from what I showed you earlier, we would focus entirely on capturing this hex, and that's it. There is nothing else, and that is going to be a battle from there to there, and that's it. That's the strategy. There's no dynamics. There's no clever things happening. You're just choosing which hex you're going to move into next. So. To put it into perspective, um, this is quite a narrow gap, and I think they've been trying to try to close this, and I think they've also been trying to try to close this. But let's look at this one here. You've got rebels there, and you've got rebels there. So there's this one hex here. So if you're the rebels, you might want to say, okay, I'm going to spend a huge amount of time trying to get this hex here. And that's the one I've won. Now, unlike the real, real world, you could get a good die roll, and you could get that almost regardless. Um, I don't think it's really happening quite like that in the, in the real world. I'm not trying to say this is supposed to be a simulation. But I think you know, it wouldn't take too many turns before it became unrealistically different to how it was. Whereas if you were to play just one hex at a time, okay, we're well, going to take this one. And then you're going to think about it. Whereas the rebels don't have much choice. You get some artillery to bear there, you can bring in, you know, move your troops around. And the same goes with the Syrian units, who have got a bit more dice to play with because they've got the arm. You know, they might say, okay, well, what we're going to do, we're going to take out this hex here, or we're going to try and take out, we're going to try and break through to this one, or we're going to try and, you know, they would do one hex or one little battle. It's not like the Western Front or, you know, there's some sort of dynamic battle front where lots is happening, where a lot is happening. So I think, to some extent, this does reflect that sort of very bitty, static strategy that I imagine is being. Anyway, so we've got about four seconds left, so um, 